Hey everybody, welcome back to 7th Homunculus Productions Informationable <laughs> Informationable Informational uh, Metaphysical Interplanetary Modeling Series and Diorama Building and Scratch Building Series You can add your own adjectives there. First thing we're going to do is uh, take a look at some things I got in the mail this week. Something I'm really happy to see. I finally got my bridge model. Star Trek the original series bridge model. Now uh, this is a it's pretty cool. Not to, I'm not going to do a step by step on this because it's already been done. I'll put it in the uh, description or down below this video somewhere. Uh, guy over at uh, Starship Modeling Academy has already done a step-by-step -step on this, so I won't be doing it, but I will give you guys uh, sneak peeks into my progress as I'm moving along. Um, this is the highly inaccurate captain's chair. I don't know how well you can see that, but I'm hoping fairly well. Let me get a little bit more light on the subject here. I don't know if that'll make much difference. Uh, but it, anyway, I, it, it, we're going to make it a little more accurate, um, but we're going to drill all this out and put fiber optics in it, and uh, it's going to be cool looking, I hope. Um, something else. Oh, I just want to remind you again, too. Yeah, I'll, I'll post a link to a guy that does this step-by-step I'm going to add some aftermarket uh, stuff to it. I'm not sure what all. There's a lot of stuff available. Um, as a matter of fact, there's so much stuff available that if you buy it all and use it all, you don't need the kit, really. And I don't want to do that. I, I want to make this kit with some modifications, not just all brand new parts and the kit just sits in the box. We're not going to do that. Um, but uh, let's set this to the side. Uh, one of the things I got in the mail this week is a little stand for when I'm soldering, which I, I needed, and I got this for less than five bucks on uh, eBay. It's uh, it's a cheapie. I can't remember the name brand. I think it's SE or something like that. It's, it's not really. Like I said, it was less than five bucks, but it's good solid metal, good uh, cast iron base to hold it in place, place to put your soldering gun. Everything's on a 360 swivel, back and forth, up and down. So it should be pretty handy. I do a lot of soldering because I do a lot of lighting on my scratch builds and kits and stuff. And uh, I'll end up using this a lot. This uh, You may see this frequently. Uh, also, in the mail this week, I got, it's called some pin vices. Now up until the internet, I always called these uh, thumb screws, which isn't true. Thumb screws is like an instrument of torture, but <laughs> that's another story for another video. Um, but basically what this is, is uh, just you can put your drill bit in there and kind of twist it like that instead of using a mechanical drill which might be a little bit too fast, too much force, uh, and too little control. Uh, this is what you need. I have uh, 
let's see, it looks like the size, these are some of these I'll never use, there's no reason for it, some of these look like a hair, more like a hair than a drill bit anyway, um, so it looks like I've got them from 0.3 mil up to 1.6 mil, which would mean I'll only use these two these two pin vices with it and these two will be for my bigger drills when I don't want to use a power drill or a Dremel or whatever to drive them in gosh that's the last thing I need is to get these mixed up or lose them uh, what a mess that would be um, yeah can't wait to get this back on and get this put away really not how you open it and get to the drills. There's a slot in the top. I just wanted you to be able to see them. And, uh, yeah, yeah. It's like trying to trying to pick up a hair. I have big hands, but you know what they say, big hands, big gloves. Okay, we got that to the side. So it oh I don't know what I was going to tell you about these. I got these little bits in here. That's going to make it a lot easier to drill these out and have some control over it. And run our fiber optics in there and uh, make this captain chair pop a little bit when the time comes. Uh, and I'm probably going to figure out a way to take some balsa wood and make some... There's supposed to be two little pieces of wood right here. But like I said, that kit has problems. It, ha it has a, um, issues with being accurate. And if you want it to be 100% accurate, don't buy the kit. Just buy all the accessories that go with the kit uh, from like Don's Light and Magic and uh, 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 Federation models. And you can build a floor out of sheet styrene. And uh, all you'd be missing is the figures. And you wouldn't really be building this kit anymore. Um, so it's really up to you. I'm going to use a little bit of all that stuff, but still try to have some of the or a lot of the original kit in there because. I want to build this kit. I've wanted to build that kit since I was a kid. Uh, it's been around a long, long time. It's been retooled. It's been updated. Uh, now's my chance. We're going to do it um, with some excellent modifications. Um, and I wanted to make sure to give a shout out to Steve at Cult TV Man. That's where I bought my uh, Star Trek bridge kit. Uh, it's a great guy to buy from. I'll put a link down there. Uh, okay, so you can get yours. And he has lots of other cool stuff too. And uh, Steve's reliable and he's a good guy. And uh, um, uh, he ships fast. And uh, I was going to say if anything goes wrong, he makes it right. I've heard that, but I never had anything go wrong. So it's always really worked out well every time I've ordered from him. And uh, so if you want to order from Steve at uh, Colt TV Man, I again, I'll put the link in the description somewhere or down below there somewhere and you'll find it. And like I said, really low prices too. Good guy. Uh, we will be back shortly. Thanks. Okay, something I noticed right out of the chute here with uh, this... Uh, Star Trek bridge kit um, and like I said I'm not gonna do a step-by-step uh, -step video of that it's been done but um, something I'm noticing is that the helm so this would be like I guess this way and the captain's chair would be behind it and uh, Sulu would be here and Chekhov would be here um, but anyway this this little part here is like the radar or whatever should actually fit in there and it's a solid piece of plastic I don't know try and get that over see it's a solid piece of plastic. it's like it's indented too it's like they knew it belonged there and they still didn't do it it's kind of a not sure I really get <laughs> why that's that way so uh, we're gonna heat that up and cut that out because that's just not gonna look right Um, yeah, we're going to cut that out and have to cut this stand down quite a bit to make it fit where it belongs. 
but I mean it can be done it's just silly that it should have to be done because you can tell they knew what it looked like and defiantly they did it differently um, and then the guys will sit behind it like this yeah that's supposed to be up in there I don't know why they did that also I'm gonna have to sand all this detail off here anyway because that's that's not even close uh, I'll give some still shots at the end of this video so you can see some of this stuff that you're probably not seeing um, in the film because you know, my camera takes better pictures than it does films but yeah I just wanted to make mention of that in case you do buy this and uh, just hate to see anybody get surprised by it there's a lot of other surprises in here too and I'll probably mention them but like I said we're not going to do a step by step but I'll show you weird little things as we come across them and uh, stuff like that so uh, so now you got that all right I am uh, in the process of making many of the little figures and sanding them and trying to get rid of the seams and all that's going pretty good um, not too bad and uh, of course we got Dr. McCoy we got to sand him yet but uh, we got Spock around here somewhere eventually uh, got his body glued together oh uh, well yeah there it is I was going to say it couldn't go up too far got most of the sanding done too so yeah we put his oh little little spock head right here like up there it's not too bad I mean for as tiny as it is still don't know exactly how I'm gonna put in the details if something tells me the details are gonna be slim but because I I'm not I've never done miniatures and this truly to me would be qualify as a miniature um, tiny 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 stuff I'll, uh, I'll give you a close-up of this too um, either after this segment or at the end of the video we'll take a look at uh, one or the other we'll take a look at some uh, snapshots of these things so that uh, you can see what they look like a little better than than the cameras filming okay uh, I'll be back shortly. <clears throat> I just want to offer a couple extra thoughts on this, um, on the helm on this uh, Star Trek uh, bridge model. Um, I went ahead and cut this out. It worked out fine. I used, let's see if I can do that real quick. I just used uh, one of these. It's uh, this one's made by Walnut Hollow. It's like uh, it's a uh, got several tips to it. It's a soldering gun. It's got this exacto blade tip. Several others. You can get other tips for it. And uh, got it nice and hot and cut that out. So this will be right like that. Hope you can see that again. I'll put some pictures up at the end. And in order for that to fit in there, I had to cut the stand and actually cut a little bit too much off. The stand would go about there and hold it up. And about like, gee, my big hands are in the way. About like that. Um, and the chairs go underneath and all that. But again this is really not accurate because what they want you to do this is where it goes on the base you're uh, so you'd have this here and well you know what I'll just show you completely there's uh, just the bodies in a uh, in their chairs so that would be and check off or it will be eventually and uh, this right here would be about there 
and this right here would be yeah more or less here well there's a couple problems with that uh, for one if we can get that to stay um, look how close that's going to be to the chair assembly now this is the way the models designed this isn't because we did anything wrong here this is the way the models designed so if that's exactly where it should be and the chair is exactly where it should be then Kurt really wouldn't be able to get out of his chair without kicking the this part of the console so to give him a little well, well I don't want to get ahead of myself also this piece here that I cut a little too short it would fit about right there it's way too narrow now here's one from Don's Light and Magic and that's way more accurate that's better and this really isn't and not only that and yeah, I don't even I'm not even sure Don's does this what I'm going to show you it's also supposed to hang over here a little bit um, it's not even long enough to do that but uh, to give you a better idea of where this positioning would be more accurate just uh, oh <coughs> Man, working with these miniatures, I tell you, it's a new beast for me. The smallest I used to go usually go is one eighth, one twelfth if I really, really have to, and I don't have any choice. But um, I always make it so I have a choice. I'm not even crazy about one eighth. I like one six scale. I like the big stuff, but I'm trying to get outside of my comfort zone and uh, learn how to do new things and. Hey, if I do, that's great. If it doesn't work out, eh, won't be because I didn't try. Um, man, I, you wouldn't believe it. Before I turned the camera on, I had this looking just exactly like it's supposed to be, and now I can't, can't get it on there to save my life. So, but. All right, so where this should be is more like more forward. This would be here. This would be here, and it would hang down in the front a little bit, which I don't think any of them, any of the uh, even the replacement parts do that, and that gives Kirk a lot more room here. So right, anyway, <laughs> we'll go into the sand and all this off. And I hope I made some sense out of that right there. I don't know. Um, I would just go ahead and use this one and modify it. Except that it's solid resin. And now I just to get it to light it the way I'm hoping to. Um, I'm not that skilled. I don't think I can do it. Um, I can do it with this, I think. I may be kidding myself on that one too. I don't know. We'll find out. Anyway. Um, so I got that done, and uh, and I got this all sanded off all, so that uh, the detail wasn't raised there because we're going to change the detail. Remember that was woefully inaccurate, and we're going to hopefully do something about that. Uh, let's see what else have I got. Oh, tiny Spock is uh, now. I even got I think the seam sanded. Looks like I got them all. I have to double check it. And there he is with his little little Spock head on. I don't know if you can thinking no every time I try to do a close-up with the, the movie camera part of my camera it ends up being terrible but anyway that's where or that's the way he's gonna look except you know I'm gonna try and paint him that's really small I mean it's like again I'm way outside of what's comfortable for me with this so we'll see how it goes I got a feeling I'm gonna end up doing it more than once uh, so there's that, and uh, I also got one of these scanners. Let's see if I got that close by. Uh, well, I just don't see it here. Well, gosh, I wasn't very well prepared for this video. Was it? Terrible. Anyway, I got a few little scanners. Uh, that'll 
be in place on the diorama that weren't included before. Uh, one of I, I, actually, Spock Scanner came with the kit. That's a new feature in the newer build of the uh, Enterprise. Uh, but I have some other ones too uh, that are uh, for uh, the engineering station, I think, and the environmental station, maybe. Not sure. Something like that. I'll have to double check. Uh, as soon as I find that scanner laying around here somewhere, I'll I'll show it to you and I'll show you the other ones. We'll get there. Like I said, with the um, with the bridge, I'm not going to do a step by step, but I will, you know, show you little things about it that I'm doing. And that way, it uh, I got it on film that uh, I won or lost or had a draw, whatever. Um, I'll be back in a minute to show you something else. All right, on with the good work here. Um, I wanted to show you, I know I showed you these earlier. I uh, wanted to show you maybe a little more practical application for them. It's a 5 16th bit. No, I'm sorry, 5 64th bit. I'm going to get it in there nice and snug. And we're going to go back to our 1 6 scale Scotty model. And what I want to do is, now I'll cut these down, but I want to use those to uh, hold his hands on. In other words, I'm going to drill a hole in there, uh, put putty in the hands, and put the nail over that, and put these in there and glue them in nice and, nice and tight. And that gives us a little extra stabilization on the hands because this is uh, hands, get, hands and heads get knocked off really easy um, on kits. So this is a really good practical application where I can show you how this, why this is sometimes necessary. It's because I don't want to go into this tight spot with a, my big old drill or even my, my uh, Kawasaki rotary tool. Um, I want this kind of control over it. Now, to get it started, it's going to take a little extra pressure. It's not hard, but it's not 100% easy. And uh, just try and drill a straight hole. It's, it looks like. Uh, the bit slipping a little bit. This may be a little too big uh, for it. This isn't one of the drills that came with it. Even though it's not on, oh, it's got it's kind of cool. Huh. That uh, this is filled with uh, water putty. I didn't do the arms on camera, but they are. right in there. I, uh, not sure that's the right, right bit for this. So it doesn't seem to be holding quite tight enough. Oh yeah, this one, maybe this one is, that was the whole problem, I think. Go ahead and push that down in there. Oh yeah, that, that was the thing. I needed to go down a size. These are new. I just got them. Well, I showed you earlier. Just got them, so bear with me. I work out the kinks and figure out what's what. 
This doesn't have to be terribly deep. I'd say definitely not over an inch. Not even that far. It's just about what we need. Careful, you don't want to drill through and come out somewhere on the side of the arm. It definitely sucks when that happens. But even that's fixable. Let me just uh, shake this out a little bit. Yep, those are going to be fine. All I got to do is cut them down. I'll glue them in there probably first, and then I'll just cut them off with my snips and. And the hands, uh, I'll fill them with, actually I'll fill the hands with putty, something that will stay in there and won't run out. And uh, point them on there and I'll have a little extra, uh, little extra holding power on there. So that should work out fine. Alright. I love it when something works. Okay, I'll be back after this important message. Monsters do have their place in the zoo, in your nightmares, in the deep, in your favorite horror movies. But not in your living room, on your TV. Don't let pay TV be the monster in your living room. Pay TV and cable TV companies are seeking the right to charge you for the very programs you now get free. If you want to stop pay TV and save free television, sign the petition in the lobby of this theater. Let your lawmakers know how you feel in the fight against pay TV and cable TV. So remember, Support free TV or that cable stuff will take over before you know it. You won't be able to watch nothing without cable. Um, I found my little... Uh, well, well, I don't know what I want to call them now. Scanners or whatever. Uh, there's Spox. That's the one that comes with the kit. That's quite accurate. Um, really. It's even got the little handle on the side that I'm sure you can't see. Uh, this is the one that uh, um, Paragraphics puts out. Um, I like it even a little better, I think. They really come out like this. You just fold them up. I don't know if you've ever messed with Photo Etch before. I'm pretty new to it myself. Um, you just fold it up and glue it, and it makes a nice little scanner or viewer or whatever for you. And there's enough to do put all of them up there. I think I like this one a little bit better than this one because it's just a little bit bigger and it when I put it on the where it where it's going to go it just look better. Um, and I can always replicate that handle and put that on there. Uh, what's really cool is no matter which one I use. If I can use that one, I can use this one, it really doesn't matter. Either one of them can be lit so I can get a little blue light in there and uh, really doll them up. That'll be cool. Probably a uh, uh, three millimeter I'm thinking. Uh, blue LED. Probably use LEDs for this. Um, so that's cool. Got that going. Um, wanted to show you something else on Mr. Scott too. Uh, this is this is just kind of unfortunate that these kids are kits are this way. Um, you can play with it a little bit because um, they're vinyl. You can heat it up and reshape them somewhat. Uh, some people can reshape the crap out of them. I, uh, I don't, I, that's not, that's not my goal on this. Um, but um, 
this this may really seem like I'm being awful picky, but actually, the uh, the shirt should be a little wider than the pants because otherwise it's going to look like the shirt's tucked in, and that's not how they wore them on Star Trek at all. Period. They just didn't. They wore them on the outside. So, but that's not the only problem. Another problem is if I put this where it should be. Look at that gap in the back between right here. Look at that. Now I, uh, it had that before I put the, uh, and the Kirk one is worse by the way, but it, it was that way before I put the uh, water putty in. But the water putty does expand a little bit. I get that. And it made it worse. But it's not, all is not lost. For one thing, <laughs> I'm putting this in a diorama, so, and it's not, it's not really a 360 uh, uh, diorama, it's more of a 180 diorama, meaning that, well, meaning that the back's not going to show. Uh, the, it, the, the back isn't part of the show, I should say. But, there's still some things we can do. If you take this, this is going to make the pants look like the shirts over them a little more by squeezing them in a bit. And that did work. Looks like I could give it another squeeze. And it helped close the gap a little bit in the back. It didn't make it perfect, but it helped. It helped quite a bit. Uh, maybe, let's give it another squeeze and see what happens. <laughs> That's what she said, I know. Alright. Yeah. No, it's not, it's not perfect. But it's better. Now, here's my hope. <laughs> what I'm hoping to have happen here is when I pour the water putty down in here, it's going to hold this where we want it to be held. Squeezed in a little bit. Plus the water putty heats up a little bit, so hopefully this will form around it somewhat and uh, we'll uh, be better off in the long run. I don't know. Well, you know, there's only one way to find out, right? Uh, another thing I want to do is remember we wanted to try and keep these... Well, now that's discouraging, isn't it? That fell off awful easy. I also want to keep these um, legs spread apart a little bit, just to... Uh, <laughs> don't say that's what she said. Um, just, just to, you know, make the pose a little more dynamic, and plus it keeps his feet on the ground a little better. Uh, haven't decided what I'm going to use in there to, because uh, it's, it's not like they have to be very far apart. I'm just going for just like a little bit, you know what? That, alright, there we go. Yep. That is what they call balls on perfect. Okay, now let's see what it means for this. Well, there's a couple things we're going to have to do. We're going to have to do the pinching down here instead of up there. If it'll let us. doesn't look like it wants to let us. And I really don't want to have to try and sit there and hold it because it's, that will end in tears. I won't be able to do it. <laughs> this is crazy, eh? Ah, that was dopey. Alright. Well, hey, it was an idea. Okay, our battery died. kind of saw that coming, though. I knew it was going to happen. I just didn't know when. Um, turn this light off. I found out that doesn't look so great. I just needed to get a different kind of clamp. 
this is working a lot better it's uh, definitely going to hold the sides in so that the shirt looks like it's on the outside a little better and we really actually if I get it centered cut down on that gap quite a bit could maybe stand to go just a, just a tad more it may have made it tougher for you to see but yeah I can live with that I can actually live with that so it's all right definitely 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 yeah hopefully we won't lose anything in the translation when we spread the legs apart doesn't look like we did it's all good still gonna have a little putty in work that's such a thin line in there I mean I'm gonna have to use putty I may be able to get away with modeling paste mm -hmm. kind of want to make sure his body's the way I want it to be because boy there'll be no turning back really when once we pour the uh, stuff in there okay so there's nothing left to do but get some stuff mixed up and do it and I will do that on camera I'll come back shortly and uh, we'll get her done take a look at uh, how it does um, so see you in a few <clears throat> okay I got some things roughly pre-measured uh, what we're getting ready to do Sure, we got a spoon or two within reach. And yeah, that's too. <laughs> it's too thick. That's not pan pancake batter, is it? Just add a little at a time. Remember, we had a. Had a bad day with this stuff at one point. It's still a little thick. Yeah. Tell you what, man, just a dab more. I used heaping cups and can't use a heaping cup of water, that doesn't work. I used heaping cups of powder and oh well, that's still quite thick. Let's see, that's what you say. Any ladies out there, does that look like a, about pancake batterish to you? Okay. Yeah. Well, I can tell right now I mixed up way too much of this stuff, but it is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and start getting it in the legs. Remember, we want to kind of plunge that down in there because an air pocket could just hold that stuff up. Just got done listening to. Uh, Mozart's Requiem Man. What a powerful piece of music that is. Okay. I'm sure 
we're down in there pretty good. I'm going to put just a little bit more. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to fill it up. Um, because if we do, when we stick our screw and stuff down in there from the by, uh, torso end, it's going to run out all over our kit. And we don't want to do that. That's probably pushing it, actually. But, I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm, I'm torn. I'm going to put more in there or not. So I don't know how much that of it that screw is going to disperse. But I guess we'll find out. In the words of Captain Ron, if anything's going to happen, it's going to happen out there. Let's go. Bear with me for a moment. Clean that off. And just to be silly, I'm going to put a little this around. Good old super glue gel. I don't think this is super glue actually brand. I think it's Loctite. Um, yeah, it's Loctite super glue. It, I, I like the gels really well. I get, get a lot of control out of them. And, well, here goes nothing. No, that's fine. Yeah, that's not going to turn into a problem. Well, that's good. Let me turn it sideways. Can't really show you this stuff now because it's going to end up being all over everything. Still a liquid. And will be for mm -hmm, 20 minutes. Probably not even that long. But oh, shoot. about there okay guys I'm calling it that's where we're gonna leave it uh, okay well we'll come back and uh, we'll have uh, one more segment before uh, before I call it quits on this particular video um just to check out our work here and see how it holds together and everything uh, so in the meantime let's get a snack it's intermission rise and stretch time time to refresh yourself and visit our snack bar got a yen for hot popcorn your favorite soft drinks are sparkling cold the juicy frank sizzling hot there's delicious coffee freshly brewed and all kinds of ice cream and candy to tempt you. Showtime will be announced loud and clear to get you back to your car in time. So stretch your legs. Come to the snack bar now. Okay, we're probably going to go ahead and let uh, Mr. Scott dry for a few hours, uh, maybe overnight. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this part of this video up and we'll pick it up uh, on the next video so I can maybe get this edited within the next day or so but I have a boon to ask of all of my friends out there who are Star Trek friends Mr. Scott's hands in one of them he's supposed to be holding this instrument uh, the instructions call it a duke a de <laughs> deuterium flux orientation sensor. I don't remember this from the series. I can't find it on the internet. I don't know what it is. If anybody can help me out, let me know. I'd like to paint it as accurately as possible. 
or I guess it doesn't matter if it's something AMT just flat out made up. Um, so if you could let me know, that would be honest. Awesome, I don't know. It's deuterium flux orientation sensor. Whatever the hell that means. Um, so let me know if you know. It has a color scheme here, but I have no idea if it's right because I have no idea what it is. Um, so if you know, shoot me an email or just go ahead and put it in the comments or whatever. Let me know somehow. Um, we will be back in the next episode with uh, Scotty and other stuff too. So thanks for watching. Bye bye. Please remember to replace the speaker and heater on the post when you leave the theater.